Hello, it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be my June TBR or possibility reads since I am a mood reader. Um, some are guaranteed like the ones I'm currently reading. And, well, I don't know about guaranteed anymore since I spend so much time outside. Like, my nails are horrible. I need to get them done, but I spend so much time outside. They just stay ruined. Like, I scrub and scrub and some of them I still can't get them to look clean because I'm in the dirt so much. <laughs> Anyway, hopefully guaranteed are the ones that are sent to me that I have up next, but start with what I'm currently reading, Nightmare Island by Shakira Bourne. The author sent me an advanced reader's copy of this. Thank you so much. I'll let it in here when this comes out. This comes out June 6th. And I'm on page 63 and loving it so far. Main character is a little annoying sometimes, but not too bad. And I read the synopsis in a book haul, so I won't read it again. So. I'm about to start this because I finished the last sequel that was sent to me. So, the third in the Dreadwood series, Flock Car by Jennifer Killick. Uh, the Lord in Vain was said in the first book, I think once, and in the second book twice. So, hopefully it won't be said at all in this one. I'm hoping. But, excited to start that because I do love the story. And then I finished the first book. I flew through that in the Lizzie and Belle mystery series. So, I picked up the second book, Poit... Portraits and Poison by J.T. Williams. I haven't been started. I'm only on chapter 2, page 13. But I love that first book so much. Some sequels I want to get to are ones that were sent to me. So those will be the ones I prioritize. So I'll talk about them first. The author reached out. He had sent me a copy of the first book and I really enjoyed it. So he reached out and he sent me a copy of the second book. If this isn't already out, I'll edit it in here when it comes this out. This comes out June 6th. This is the second in the Atlas and the Multiverse. Courage Found by Chandon... Simon. So excited. Thank you so much. And this is the first in the prequel series to the Cat Mage Chronicle series, which became an all time favorite. The author had sent me that whole series and I absolutely loved it. Meryl Urish. This is a Cat Mage Genesis series and it's this Heroes Rising. This is out now. So excited to start it. And she sent me an advanced reader's copy. Thank you so much. But then I got a surprise from. Pixel and Ink, they sent me a finished copy of the second in the Swallowtail Legacy, Betrayal by the Book by Michael D. Bale. And this is a highly, highly anticipated sequel because I love that first book so much. I cannot wait to read this. And this is out now. Thank you so much. I cannot wait. And then some books that were sent to me that I want to get to that are next up. The Wild Journey of Juniper Berry by Chad Morris and Shelley Brown. That was out August 15th. And Shadow Mountain sent me this. Thank you so much. I think I would read another book by this author duo and I really enjoyed it. So I'm so excited. And I read the synopsis in a book haul, so I won't do it again, but. And then Random House Kids, P1 Random House has sent me the second book in the Scarlet and Brown series. And I already owned the first book. Oh, well, so I went and got that out of the book room so I can read it first and then dive right into the second book. So the first book is The Outlaws, Scarlet and Brown. Beautiful covers. And I prefer these covers more than the UK editions. This is the second book that Random House Kids sent me. And this is out now. Scarlett McCain is a shoot first, ask questions later kind of outlaw. She's great spy on bank heists, her wits, and never looking back. She's on the run from her latest crime when she comes across Albert Brown. He is the sole survivor of a horrific accident, and against her better judgment, Scarlett agrees to guide him to safety. This is a mistake. Soon there are men with dogs and guns and explosives hot on their heels. Scarlet's used to being chased by the law, but this is extreme. It was only a little bank she robbed. And as they flee together across the wilds, fighting off monstrous beasts and dodging the pursuers, Scarlet comes to realize that Albert Brown is hiding a terrible secret and that he may be the most dangerous threat of all. So maybe upper middle grade. I know it was listed as middle grade everywhere that I was looking. So, but I'd say upper middle grade with the bank heist. <laughs> but I'm so excited. So, so that's all for the books that sent to me that I want get to there are more but that's just all that i'll mention here into the fairy hill by hs nora this is her newest middle grade release and i've read one other book by her and i have another book by her i still want to read the hungry ghost is the one i've read and then the missing barbara Gazi is the other book i have that i want to read <clears throat> this is her newest and i recently read this and a highly anticipated release i don't know what's wrong with my voice <clears throat> and the book also i won't read it again but i'm very excited i love the book i read by her and I had read the newest Little Grey release by Caroline Gertler, Where You've Got to Be, and I really enjoyed that. So I want to read her older book that I own and hadn't read yet, Many Points of Me. 
The moment Georgia sees the pencil points on the back of the drawing, she knows what they mean. It's a feeling like the spark of inspiration or the shiver of a secret. She has uncovered a sketch for a painting. The painting her father, a famous artist, never had a chance to make. The one that her mother has always said was supposed to be of Georgia. Ever since her father died, Georgia hasn't been sure about anything. Not about herself, not about her own art. Not even about whether her best friend Theo is still her best friend. But here is something Georgia can prove. Something she can discover. Something that will make her mark alongside her father's. And following the path of this mystery just might help Georgia find herself again too. Sounds so great. And then Evelina Jones and the Eye of the Storm by Lori Adams. This looks so piratey and just during the summer I just love piratey stories. I love them all the time but especially then. Orphaned on the banks of the Mississippi River, Evelina Jones realizes she has a strange connection to water. But she has never heard of sea magic, octosapiens, or hares to the high fleet. When an extraordinary woman arrives in a swirling water spout, Evelina's life explodes with wild adventures and unimaginable truths. She is the last hare of the infamous pirate Davy Jones. Evelina is whisked away to a giant school ship crewed by half woman creatures and teeming with hares of the world's most nefarious pirates. With food that fights back and school supplies that giggle or explode, Evelina realizes bizarre and danger are normal aboard a pirate hare school ship, and not everyone can be trusted. When Avelina is accused of a terrible crime, she and her new deckmates race to uncover the truth, unaware that a deeper, darker fate awaits. A school ship. I love just everything about that. So intrigued. And then some my book I've had forever. The Water Castle by Megan Fraser Blakemore. Somewhere beneath the Water Castle, the Fountain of Youth waits to be found. From Appledore Smith is an ordinary boy living an ordinary life, but all that changes when his father suffers a stroke and his family moves to the water castle, the ancestral home in the small town of Crystal Springs, Maine. There, Ephraim meets Mallory Green and Will Wiley, whose families are tied to the water castle's powerful secrets, including the legend that the Fountain of Youth exists on its grounds. When Ephraim learns of the fountain, he's sure to find it can cure his dad. With Mallory and Will's help, Ephraim embarks on a quest that will reveal ancient secrets, we spark old feuds and leave readers wondering, do you believe in the unbelievable? And this just gives me spring summary vibes with the cover, and I've had it for so long, I want to read it. The Flourishing of Florally Laurel by Lion Ben Moser. It's a hard name to say, plus the font. I'm not even sure if the letters are what I think they are, but <laughs> so beautiful. Floralie Laurel, freshly expelled from Miss Coffrey School for Young Girls, works as a flower seller in an English village with her brother, Tom, miles away from their home in France. They're drowning in debt, but fortunately, a grandmama arrives to save them. Unfortunately, a grandmama's idea of saving means spend, sending Floralie to the Adelaide Laurel Orphanage for unfortunate children and shaping her into a proper lady by reading her of imagination, daydreams, paintings, and poetry. Before she leaves, Floralie discovers a hidden box of dried flowers and a letter from her mother, who mysteriously disappeared years ago. The letter promises the flowers will leave Floralie to Mama if Floralie, Floralie discodes them with a flor, floriography, a dictionary of flower meanings, written by Claude Monette's gardener. Accompanied by an orphan boy who speaks only on paper, a blind librarian, and a thieving dormouse, Floralie sets out for France to find Mama. But Mama's fate may not be quite as Floralie expected, and the gardener may be hiding secrets deeper than even Monette's water lily pond. So intrigued. And then the ones from Emma Carroll that I saved just because they gave me more summer vibes for whatever reason are letters from the lighthouse. Just because it's on the sea, probably. And I've had all these for so long and I want to read them because I love her writing. February 1941, a bomb blast, a chance encounter, her mother's coat. This is all Olive can remember of the night her sister Suki went missing. With London unsafe, Olive and her brother are evacuated to the Devonshire coast to stay with a mysterious lighthouse keeper. There, Olive must solve a mystery of her own, a strange coded note which seems to link Suki to Devon and to something dark and impossibly dangerous. And then the Somerset Tsunami. Obviously, again, the sea. <laughs> and I know the sea is there in the winter too, but just growing up at the beach, it just didn't really get cold. So that's just why I probably always think about that. Somerset 1616. A sinking boat, a girl in disguise, a disappearing sea. When Fortune Sharp carves a boat from a tree with her beloved brother Jim, she's only having a bit of fun. But now is not the time for a girl to be drawing attention to herself, and she is sent away to find work dressed as a boy. Luckily, a rich manor house is hiring. Yet Barrow Hall's inhabitants harbor dangerous secrets of their own. The suspicious owner is hunting for witches, and the house itself is a little too close to the sea. So intrigued. And then Secrets of a Sun King. Obviously, this looks like the desert. 
<laughs> Always a beautiful cover. London, 1922. A discovery from ancient Egypt. A cursed package. The untold story of a young pharaoh. When Lillian Kay finds a parcel on her granddad's doorstep, she is shocked to see who sent it. A, fang a famous Egyptologist found dead that very morning, according to every newspaper in England. The mysterious package holds the key to a story about a king whose tomb archaeologists are desperately hunting for. Lil and her friends must embark on an incredible journey to return the package to its resting place to protect those they love and to break the deadly pharaoh's curse. And then some summer books that I know are summer because it says it. Just South of Home by Karen Strong. Another one I've had forever. 12 year old Sarah is finally in charge. At last she can spend her summer months reading her favorite science books and bossing around her younger brother Ellis instead of being worked to the bone by their overly strict grandmother, Mrs. Green. But when their cousin Janie arrives for a visit, Sarah's plans are completely squashed. Janie has a knack for getting into trouble and asks Sarah to take her to Creek Church, a landmark of their small town that has, she heard was haunted. It's also off limits. Janie's sticky fingers lead Sarah, Ellis, and his best friend Jasper to uncover a deep-seated part of the town's past. With a bit of luck, this foursome will heal the place they call home and the people within it they call family. Sounds like a great and probably important story to read. And yeah, just can't wait. Summer of a Thousand Pies by Margaret, Margaret Dilloway. I wanted to read this for so long. One summer, two new aunts, three pets, a ton of new friends, and 1,000 pies. When Katie Bennett is sent to live with her aunt she didn't even know she had in the quaint mountain town of Julian, she isn't sure what to expect. Patty isn't used to stability after growing up homeless in San Diego with her dad. Now she, she's staying in her mother's old room, exploring the countryside filled with apple orchards, making friends, and working in Aunt Shell's own pie shop. And soon Katie starts to feel like she belongs. Then she finds out that Aunt Shell's shop is failing. Saving the business and protecting the first place she's ever really felt safe will take everything she's learned and the help of all her new friends. But are there some things even the perfect pie just can't fix? I love anything with food and this little town and just the ant. It just all sounds incredible. And then a trilogy I had on last su summer's summer TBR. The Silver Sisters series by Lila Hallett. First book is The Forget Me Not Summer. Sisters Marigold, Zinnia, and Lily Silver can't wait for summer even though it's warm all year in LA. 12 year old Marigold, an aspiring actress, has boys on the brain and is hoping to become more than friends with her crush. Zinnia, 11, having failed at trying to tame her unruly curls, has plenty of time on her hands during summer vacation and will most likely spend it in Marigold's shadow. Five-year-old Lily, whom everyone ad adores, is content to play with her beloved nanny all day. But when their parents announce they're sending these California girls to their Aunt Sunny's house on Cape Cod for several weeks, it's a complete disaster. They're forced to adjust to a much simpler way of life. No TV, no Wi-Fi, and worst of all, sharing a room. Could their summer get any more awful? While at first reluctant, Marigold, Zinnia, and Lily are charmed by their warm-hearted and quirky Aunt Sunny, whose cheery attitude is contagious. Resolving to make the most of their situation, the sisters decide to spice up this quiet town by organizing a local talent show. As they start to make friends, like Peter, the Red Sox-loving sailor boy with an eye for Marigold, and see the magic of the Cape, the summer becomes one of first, fun, and plenty of sun, all while they learn how to band together as the strongest version of themselves they can be, sisters. That sounds so good. And then the brightest stars of summer. And then the silver moon of summer. So summer, summer, summer. All right, y'all, that's it for this video. I had a few more out, but this was, I don't see even reading all these. These are just the possibilities that I'll probably take from. So have you read any of these? Did you like them? Did you not? Did you see any that you want to read now? Let me know in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you would like to subscribe, I would love that if you'd like to. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.